even though compact sedan and hatchback sales seem to be on the decline in the United States, Honda is showing their love for compact shoppers by bringing not one, not two, but three performance versions of the Civic to the United States. And this is the hottest version, the all new Type R. Now that we have a Civic Type R in America, we have five different power levels in the Civic and three different body styles, but you cannot get every engine in every body. The top end 306 horsepower engine in this Type R is exclusive to the hatchback. Meanwhile, the turbocharged 1.5 liter SI trim that produces 205 horsepower is available just as a sedan or a coupe. And of course, if your budget does not stretch all the way up to a Type R, you can get a 180 horsepower sport version of the hatchback that gives you a little bit more oomph than we find out of the regular sedan, coupe, or hatch. The Type R is the meanest Civic, and so we get the meanest looking front end. We have standard full LED headlamps, which are LED high beams and LED low beams. And as you can see, a great deal more cooling going on because of that more powerful engine. We have grates above and below this blacked out strip that is normally chrome in the other Civics large grill section right down there. There's also a carbon fiber splitter at the bottom of the front bumper, although this is not as low as you might think. And of course, to top everything off, there's a functional scoop right there in the center of the hood. The Honda logo is the same size as the one that we find on other Civic models, but it does not hide a radar sensor because you cannot get Honda sensing on the Type R at this time. An interesting bit of trivia is that the Civic Type R and the Civic hatchback on which it is based were both developed for the European market. And that's why the hatch and the Type R are built exclusively in Honda's factory in Britain. That's also why you will not find the Type R's engine in the sedan or the coupe, which are built in America. At 179.4 inches long, this is one of the longer compact hatches in America, but you'll notice something different than most of the hatches right back here, because this really does look more like a sedan with a lift back grafted onto the back of it than your traditional American hatchback, because the rear end is not terribly vertical. It's really obvious when we lift up the Civic's hatch that something is different about this design versus something like a Volkswagen Golf GTI or a Hyundai Elantra. Helping the Type R look more aggressive, we have bulged fenders front and rear so that we could accommodate these 20 inch wheels and the wide 245 30R20 tires. Be sure and let me know what you think about the overall design of the Type R down there in the comments section below. Although most of this is functional, I do think the design is a little bit over the top for my personal tastes. In addition to the small spoiler that we find in other Civic hatches, we have this large wing up here, then we have some aero fins on the top right there, and then aero fins down here on the bottom of the bumper, along with this very distinctive three outlet exhaust. And then on either side of the rear bumper, we find this honeycomb section, which matches what's going on up front, but it's not actually functional. This is not an additional vent, and these are not parking sensors at the moment. To complete the sporty look, we have a red line that runs right down there at the bottom of the bumper in that carbon fiber splitter section, and that ties into what's going on on the side of the vehicle. You can see right there on the side sill and then on the front of the car as well. A few of you on Facebook have asked about the triple exhaust tips that we see here in the Type R. All three of them are used, but this is not an active exhaust system like we find in some European vehicles, so there are no valves that open and close while you're driving. Instead, Honda decided to use a passive system that basically has two modes. At certain engine RPMs, all three exhaust tips will have exhaust gases flowing out of them, but you'll notice if you look closely at the picture, these exhaust tips are a little dirtier than the center one. And that's because if you're traveling on the highway, something odd happens and the flow actually reverses on the center exhaust tip. It actually ends up drawing air in and that has the effect of reducing drone at highway speeds. Perhaps the biggest difference between the Civic SI and the Civic Type R is the engine, because instead of taking an existing engine and turning the dial up to 11, they built an all new engine for this car. This is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine, and it produces 306 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 295 foot pounds of torque from 2,500 RPM all the way on up to 4,500 RPM. Now, interestingly enough, you will see a variant of this engine under the hood of the brand new Honda Accord coming soon, but it actually will be detuned versus what we see in the Type R. So don't expect a 300 horsepower Accord. As you'd expect from Honda, the Type R comes only with a manual transmission. There is no automatic available in the Type R. The six speed is an all new manual transmission and it was designed specifically for the Type R and its new turbocharged engine. The other thing you should know while we're taking a look under the hood is that there is no all wheel drive system in the Type R, very much like a traditional European hot hatch and very unlike what we find in the Volkswagen Golf R or the Ford Focus RS. 
Honda has, of course, an official reason for why the Type R does not have an all-wheel drive system. But I suspect there are two big unofficial reasons. The first one is reliability. By not adding an all-wheel drive system to the vehicle, the transmission itself is under a little bit less stress. And if you plan on tuning your vehicle, it would be easier to get 400 horsepower out of this without damaging the transmission than if you had an all-wheel drive system. I also suspect it has to do with overall vehicle reliability in general, because the more parts you add to the vehicle, the less reliable it's going to be. Therefore, a front-wheel drive Type R is probably going to be more reliable than an all-wheel drive Type R. In addition to the more powerful engine up front, the Type R also gets an all-new active damper system, a unique suspension setup, four-piston Brembo brakes up front. These are huge brakes for a vehicle this size and those wide 245 with tires. We also get some standard features that are optional in other Civic models like the 12-speaker audio system, but all models will still have 25 cubic feet of storage back here, which is about the same as what you'll find in many subcompact crossovers. When it comes to front seat comfort, the Type R scores very similarly to the Sport model of the hatchback. We don't have a power seat because that would add extra weight to the car. Instead, Honda gives us a multi-way adjustable manual seat, but we don't find adjustable lumbar support. And that's really the only thing that I think I would add to this seat, either manual support with a little lever or a four-way adjustable type like we see in other Civic models. We still get a tilt telescopic steering column with the same range of motion as the regular Civic. And if I scoot this seat all the way up so you can see on the camera, we have very aggressive side bolstering and seat bottom bolstering. Unlike some sport vehicles out there on the market, these bolsters are more than just additional foam and fabric. There's actually a support rib inside. And that means that if you're much larger than me, you may find these seats a little uncomfortable because these will definitely dig into you. As you'd expect, rear seat comfort is identical to the regular Civic hatchback because the rear seats are exactly the same. That means that we still have very generous legroom. I have about six inches sitting here right behind myself, and my head barely touches the ceiling if I lean back in the seat. It's worth noting that the Type R does not get a moonroof, and that does improve headroom up front especially. So if you plan on tracking your vehicle and you need to wear a helmet, this is gonna be a lot easier to accommodate than other vehicles that have a moonroof. At just under 26 cubic feet of storage space, the Type R still has class-leading cargo capacity, even though we don't have a very square rear end. We have this sort of slide across tonneau cover right back there, and definitely enough room to put 22-inch roller bags in this upright position. But if we lift up the cargo area load floor, we don't find a spare tire. Instead of a spare, we get a tire inflator kit and some additional storage. As we look around the interior, keep in mind that the Type R comes only one way, and it's exactly as you're seeing it right here. The rear seats are always going to be black, and the front seats are always going to be this two-tone red and black design with Type R embroidered right there on the seat back. The seat belts are red front and rear, and they're height adjustable for the driver and the front passenger. From this angle, you can really see how aggressive the seat bolsters are. The seats themselves are made from this imitation suede fabric that we see here in the black and red section, and then sort of a tennis shoe or sneaker kind of fabric right here on the inserts. The front doors are essentially the same as the regular Civic, so we have a soft touch injection molded upper section, we have a center panel here with fabric that matches the seats as well as the armrest, and then we have a little red trim right there in the carbon fiber effect section. The red design theme continues all the way across the interior where that red line runs all the way from one side basically to the other side of the car. The dashboard is a soft touch injection molded material and then below this trim strip there's another soft touch section. The glove compartment is a bin style compartment easily able to accommodate a tablet computer. The touchscreen infotainment system is standard on all Type R models as is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. We also get factory navigation if you'd prefer to use that. Below that we find standard two-zone climate control and then a storage area where you can easily put your smartphone. All Type R models get this metal ball head shifter. The six-speed manual is of course standard. It reverses all the way over to the right and then down, which is my preference. Behind the shifter we have controls borrowed from the regular Civic, this brake hold button which keeps pressure on the brakes at stoplights, and of course an electric parking brake. Some people were a little sad that we don't have a traditional handbrake. Be sure to let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section. Personally, I don't plan on doing any handbrake turns in my car, so that doesn't really bother me at all. Then we have a Civic Type R badge right here with the production number of this particular car. And then over to the right, we have our drive mode selector. This allows us to choose between the Type R mode, the Sport mode, and the Comfort mode. The practical center armrest is also borrowed from the regular Civic. This is done in the same material as the seats. This section slides forward and backward, and it also opens up to give you more access to this large console. We have two cup holders that can slide forward and backward, a small divider here that slides forward and backward. As you can see, the storage compartment is very deep. 
The instrument cluster is very similar to what we see in the regular Civic. We have our engine temperature gauge on the left, fuel gauge on the right, and then everything else that you're seeing is part of a 7-inch LCD right in the middle. The LCD changes themes depending on the mode that we're in. We have Sport, and you'll notice we now have these little red bars that appear up top, and then we have the Plus R mode as well. When we change into the other modes, you'll notice we have a little icon right here that appears in the center that shows that the suspension and steering settings have also changed. In addition to the digital speedometer and analog tachometer, we see a variety of different screens in here from infotainment and phone readouts to our traditional trip computer information. We also have a throttle and braking graph so you can see exactly what the throttle position is there and the pressure of your brakes. There's also a turbo pressure readout. A shift gauge, very much like we see in the Civic Si, the lights light up from the left to the right, indicating when you're supposed to shift. There's also a G meter, a stopwatch for lap times, and of course, your typical trip computer information like fuel economy. The steering wheel is similar to the other Civic models, but it features a flat bottom in the Type R, and of course, these red leather inserts. On the right side of the steering wheel is where we find the button to control that multifunction display, volume up, down, track forward, backward, as well as interacting with that multifunction display, dedicated phone hang up and pick up button and a voice command button. And on the right side, we find the controls for the cruise control. Again, this is a standard cruise control system because you cannot get Honda sensing in the Type R. Unusually for first drive events like this, we have had a decent amount of time behind the wheel of the Type R. However, as I usually say, we haven't had this at home on our usual test course. So the zero to 60 and the braking numbers are subject to change once we get this on our own home turf and can test it on the same course that all of our other cars are tested on. We ran from zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds in this vehicle. Keep in mind, this is a manual transmission only, and I'm not a professional racing driver. If you are a professional driver, you should be able to get just under five seconds, we're told, out of this same car. A few other publications have been able to after really playing with the transmission an awful lot, really dialing things in to get exactly the right launch. The launch is the trickiest part. Traction is an issue with this vehicle because it is front wheel drive and there is so much low end torque out of this engine. 5.3 seconds is a very respectable time. Now that may sound a little bit slower than some of the competition, but keep in mind if it has a manual transmission, you're probably going to be about as fast in those options as in this vehicle here. Because your real world 0 to 60 time really will vary depending on how good you are at launching the car and how fast you are shifting. In our 60 to 0 braking test, we stopped from highway speeds back to 0 in 110 feet, which is very short for a compact car. You can thank the Y245 with tires for the stopping distance. Obviously, the Type R is all about handling, and this vehicle does not disappoint. But this also surprisingly feels fairly different than the other Civic models out on the road, even though the basics of every other Civic is right here in the Type R. That's because the Type R gets a unique suspension. The front suspension design is very different than the other Civics, and the rear suspension design has had some substantial changes. The front suspension design has been tweaked and it is now somewhat similar to the General Motors Hyperstrut or Ford Revo knuckle setup that helps reduce torque steer. In addition to the new front suspension that helps reduce torque steer, Honda also gave this a mechanical limited slip differential. Now there is still just a hint of torque steer in this vehicle because it is front wheel drive and it is more noticeable if you're turning the wheel if you're accelerating in slight corners. However, this is never going to feel like an older front wheel drive V8 Cadillac or some of those high horsepower Chrysler vehicles that were front wheel drive. This is very, very well controlled. It's a really good thing that torque steer is well controlled, of course, because this, as I said earlier, is not available with all wheel drive. This is a front wheel drive car only. So the driving dynamics are a little bit different than some of the all wheel drive competition. However, you'd be surprised how well this car handles. Now, I'll leave the track day diaries to other channels. I was able to drive this on a track earlier today, but it was more of a lead follow arrangement, so I wasn't really given free reign to beat this car out on a track as I would have liked to. I'm also not a racing driver, so comparisons are a little bit tricky in that respect, and I will leave that to more qualified people. But I do know a lot about driving cars out on the road, and the feel of this is absolutely incredible. This reminds me a great deal of the Mercedes-Benz CLA or the Audi A3. I would actually say this is is valid competition to something like an Audi S3 or an A3 or the CLA 250. Now the CLA 45 AMG is that next level of crazy and of course it's all wheel drive, but this could be seen as a discount version of that because this is going to be about half the price of a CLA 45 AMG even after you've paid some of the excessive dealer markups on this car that we're seeing. 
Really helping out the handling and the ride score in the Civic Type R is the standard adaptive suspension system. It has three modes. We have R, we have Sport, and we have Comfort. I've been spending most of my time in the Comfort mode because I think it's an excellent balance of handling ability and cushion for the road. The roads out here in the Olympic Peninsula that we've been driving on aren't exactly smooth, but this has done an excellent job of soaking up the bumps. This really is the kind of car that you could live with daily, and it really wouldn't be a problem, and that's all thanks to the adaptive suspension system. Now, if I had to choose, I would prefer a mode that was just a little bit cushier because some of the larger potholes do make their way into the cabin, but I think this is an excellent balance between the two. In our preliminary cabin noise test at 50 miles an hour, this came in at 74 decibels. Now again, keep in mind, this has not been on the same road that we test all the other cars, but this does appear to be a little bit louder than the regular Civic, and that wouldn't surprise me because we have much wider tires. As we've come to expect from Honda, fuel economy has been excellent during my day and about 200 miles of driving in this car. We've been averaging 30.4 miles per gallon, which is definitely better than the all-wheel drive Golf R or any of the other all-wheel drive compact hatchback competition. In fact, more surprising than that is that the fuel economy is really not that much lower than the Honda Civic with the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. You will get about four to five miles per gallon better in that model, but this is significantly faster with nearly twice the power under the hood. One of the other changes that Honda made to the Civic in order to make the Type R was they replaced the steering rack with a different unit. Instead of having the electric assist module on the steering column right here behind the wheel, it's down there on the rack, and that helps improve the steering rack feel. So this doesn't feel as isolated as the regular Civic. Now this does not feel as engaging as Civics of the past, or as certain Mazda models of the past, but this is easily one of the most communicative, compact front-wheel drive vehicles you can buy in America. This easily ranks with the Audi A3 or the Mercedes CLA in terms of steering feel. And that's really high praise for the front-wheel drive segment because the A3 and the CLA really are two of the best handling and best feeling vehicles. You may notice that I've made a number of references to the Audi and the Mercedes, but haven't made as many references to the Subaru WRX STI or the Ford Focus RS or even the Golf R. The reason that those comparisons come to my mind a little bit more freely is that the Civic feels a little bit more grown up, especially than the WRX STI and the Ford Focus RS. The Ford Focus is really starting to feel old and the Subaru WRX has really become quite a different vehicle. I think the closer competition would be the Golf R to this vehicle, but the Golf R is quite expensive. In fact, comparably equipped to what we're driving here, as we're gonna talk about in a bit, it's gonna be more than $10,000 more expensive. And that brings us right along to pricing. The Civic Type R is on sale now, and you may find 2017 or 2018 models at your dealership. They should be functionally identical. No changes are made for 2018, and 2017 ended up being a very short model year for the Type R. The 2017 price tag is $33,900, and that's likely to increase very slightly for 2018. The important thing to remember is that all Type R models come exactly one way. You can choose between five different exterior colors, but the interior color is always this black and red combo, and there are no options to choose from. There are no performance packages, no optional sunroof, nothing like that that we find in some of the competition. In terms of comparisons, that's about $4,000 less than a Subaru WRX STI, about $4,000 less than a Ford Focus RS as well, and a whopping $11,000 than a comparable Golf R. Now let's talk about pros and cons. Even though this does not come with all-wheel drive, handling is a very strong pro for the Type R. Now this won't have the same kind of driving dynamics as the all-wheel drive entries with which this competes, but it is going to hold the road just as well. Reliability is also a strong suit for the Civic, and I expect that to continue on over to the Type R, as is fuel economy. We also have a very comfortable interior, and I think the best designed interior in this segment. The Golf's interior is quite nice, but the Golf R is almost in a segment to its own because, again, it is $11,000 more than this. That's about 30% more expensive. On the con side, we definitely have aesthetics. Let me know what you think about this rear wing down there in the comment section below, but it's not exactly my cup of tea out back. I wish that Honda would put the same drivetrain into the Civic sedan. I think that I would buy one of those instead. And of course, if you're looking for all-wheel traction, you won't find it in the Type R, so lack of all-wheel drive should be there on the con section. It's also worth noting that $34,000 puts this in competition with the Audi A3 and the Mercedes-Benz CLA, like I said earlier. And the Civic Type R competes very well, as long as you don't need the luxury badge on the front. Now again, it may seem odd to compare an Audi and a Mercedes to a Civic Type R, 
but all three of them are excellent handling front wheel drive vehicles. And this reminds me an awful lot of the Audi A3 and the CLA out on the road. And my bottom line for the moment is that if you're looking for one of the most fun compact hatchbacks you can buy in America, definitely put this on your shopping list. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want to know more about the Civic Type R, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen because we should have a full review on the Type R based on a week with the car coming up soon. I'll see you next week.